Okay, this one's a bigger tutorial than the last one. Uh, not that it's any different kind of uh, concept or... I guess reciprocals are more involved in absolute value of a function. Uh, just because absolute value can boil down to something fairly simple. Remember last time we looked at f of x and we came up with a list of numbers for f of x? And then we said, what about if we we looked at absolute value of f of x? Do you remember this? F f was some kind of a function. You put a number in, you get a number out. Let's say, you know, if we had it, I think we made a little table. And we said if we have negative 3 is 7 and 5 is negative 2. You put in negative 3, you get 7 out. And so on, right? If you do absolute value of that now, after you get this number out, you're doing the absolute value of that. So we're putting in another function, right? It's absolute value is a function. We're doing absolute value of f of x. You're kind of combining two functions together. So you're putting a number in here. You're performing this function. And then when you get the result from that, you're performing this function. So you hopefully figured out that it didn't change the x values, the input values. It changed the numbers that came out. If you started with a negative number, you still had a negative number. This was still negative. It changed the y values, right? So when you put in um, when you put in five, you get negative two, but then you put it in this absolute value and you get two. It's going to be the same for reciprocals of functions, okay? Reciprocals of functions, but instead of doing this absolute value transformation afterwards here, so let's start with some different numbers. Um, instead of that, instead of doing the absolute value of something, you're doing the reciprocal of it, which you just write as one over that function. So instead now of doing absolute value down here, it's you're starting with f of x. So you're doing f of x. And then once you get the result of that, you're doing the reciprocal of that, which of course you don't write like that. But I think it helps to think it's this function of this function of x. So you're taking your values here. Like if you take 2 and normally f turns it into a 4. You put a 2 in, you get a 4 out. If now we're going to do the reciprocal of that, what are we going to get out instead? 1 over 4. Same question or same thing as last time. Does it change this number you start with? Not in the order we're doing it, right? We're doing, we're doing the function f, and then we're doing the reciprocal of that, which, of course, you don't write like that, but... Okay? You're putting a number in for x, you're performing this function, whatever it happens to be, f, and then you're doing the reciprocal of that. So if you think about it, let's make a table of numbers the way we did last time. We'll just make up some numbers again to represent our function. Let's pretend this is f of x. Uh, numbers like 2, 4, the one we just had there, or uh, a half, 7, and 1, 2, and 2, 1. All right, so let's look at what, what happens with that now. What happens with that if we look at 1 over f of x? Okay, that, that before that was without this thing, right? That was just putting in a 2 and getting a 4. Or putting in a half and getting a 7. If you take this now and are doing the reciprocal of whatever happens to come out, like this, think about how this works. If we put in a 2 now, we get a 4, and then we get the reciprocal of that. Right? Put a 2 in, you get a 4, and then do the reciprocal, you get a quarter. So instead of, uh, instead of this table, if we do a table for 1 over f of x, what's in our table for 1 over f of x? Instead of 2, 4, we have 2, a quarter, right? doesn't change the x values. Instead of a half and 7, think about it again. If you think in terms of first principles about what functions are, it makes sense here. And maybe you don't like that it's curving around here, but let's do it this way. If we put in a half, we get a 7. And then we do the reciprocal of that, we get 1 7th. 
So what does this point become? You get a one-seventh in the end, but what did you start with? A half. It doesn't change the x values, right? If you started with a half, you're still starting with a half. You just end. It changes the y values, just the same way as for absolute value. If we start with a 1, what do we end up with here? A 1 gives us a 2, and then that turns into a half. So 1, 2 becomes a point 1, 1 half, changing the y values. What's this point going to become? 2, 1 is going to become 2, 1. Notice that one doesn't change, right? This one doesn't change because the reciprocal of... 1 is 1, right? 1 is its own reciprocal. 1 and negative 1, uh, points that have y values of 1 and negative 1 don't change. Doesn't, doesn't change, okay? So if you think about it like this, where you're taking numbers and just doing those two functions on those numbers in sequence, you'll realize what changes and what doesn't change. Because the common misconception is here is if I gave, if I Probably still, if I put this on a test or asked you a week from now, here's a table of numbers. What numbers are in this? Everybody would be good at changing these to reciprocal, but what do you think people would do with these? They'd probably change them as well, a lot of people, because they think, well, if it's the reciprocal, i got to do the reciprocal of everything. The x values don't change. We're not doing, we're not doing f of 1 over x. We're not doing the reciprocal inside the brackets. Just because, I mean, it would be, it'd be good if we did, but we don't. We don't do it in this order where we look at doing the reciprocal before you apply the function. Let me get rid of all this other junk here. Uh, for some reason, now I didn't write the Math 12 curriculum. I think it would have been good if we did this, but they don't look at doing this in the other order like this. Like first doing the reciprocal and then performing the function f and seeing what happens. We don't do that. We also don't do f of absolute value of x inside, right? We don't do that in that order as well. All we do is after. It's the reciprocal of a function or absolute value of a function. It changes the y values because of that, all right? There's a lot of stuff in here that's, you know, review of reciprocals of numbers. Um, I noticed some people in my other class were having kind of grade 10 flashbacks and thought somehow that you're supposed to switch the sign of the number because they were thinking about slopes of perpendicular lines. Like if this is a 2, this is negative a half. That's got nothing to do with this, right? The reciprocal of 2 is a half. In grade 10, you used it to look at slopes of perpendicular lines, but 2, reciprocal is a half. Those are the same. This is negative a half, 2. The reciprocal of x is 1 over x. Even if it's a fra even if it's a fraction like two thirds, the reciprocal is one over two thirds, or three halves. Right? You can write it two ways. You can say one over two thirds or three halves. Flip it over. Now this is worth thinking about down in the bottom here. Describe what happens to the. We're going to use very mathematical terms, but describe what happens to the value of one over x as the value of x. So as the value of x becomes large positively. So let's make a uh, make a number line here and think about this. Actually, I should stop this and uh, start again. You think about what happens. You try and describe that while I'm getting this organized. Why didn't it go?